Yo, Kipper Sky here. What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to talk about how to decide what crossover is best for your subwoofer. Now, this is a very tough task to tackle because subwoofers in their crossovers is there's a lot of variables that will help you decide what crossover to set. But before we move forward, we need to understand what a crossover is. Now, I've done plenty of how to videos on crossover and how to set it up, what it is how it works, and it's all in my how-to playlist. If you haven't seen that playlist of videos, go back and check that out. But in this video, let me tell you a little bit about what a crossover is. So there are two types of crossovers in a home theater or an audio world, right? And it's called HPF, which means high pass filter, and LPF, that means low pass filter. And they do what they say. A high pass filter filters out all of the lows. It lets all the highs come through, but it crosses over and eliminates all of the lows. The LPF or the low pass filter does the quite, quite the opposite. It lets all the low frequencies through and cuts off all the high frequencies. So when I say frequencies, I mean Hertz. HZ is usually how you see it represented. So if I go to my AVR and I want to set my subwoofer, we are setting a low pass filter. That's what a crossover is on your, on your subwoofer is a low pass filter. It's going to take away all the highs depending on how you have it set. So let's use this bookshelf speaker for example. So this speaker has a frequency response sticker on the back. It actually tells you what this speaker is capable of playing in terms of frequency, in terms of hertz. And you can find that for any speaker, subwoofer, or tower, or bookshelf, does not matter. Everything has a certain frequency response. This particular speaker can play um, down to 60 hertz and up to 20,000 hertz. So if we want this to stop playing at 60 hertz, we need to set a high pass filter around 60 hertz. because That's gonna allow everything from 60 on up to play, but since I have my high pass filter set to 60, anything underneath that starts to rather quickly drop off to protect the speaker from playing things that it's not capable of doing. The same applies to our subwoofer. So if I go to the back of my subwoofer and I'm playing with my crossover dial, essentially that's a low pass filter. Let's say that your sub says 30 hertz up to 200 hertz. So if you set it to in the middle, let's say you set it at 100 hertz, well everything 100 and lower is going to play because that's your low pass filter. Everything 100 and up will start to quickly dwindle away because you have your low pass filter set to not play anything more than 100 hertz. So to simplify it, a crossover's job is just to protect your speaker from playing songs and sounds that it's not capable or comfortable playing. So don't think that a crossover just stops it immediately. So if you set it to 100 hertz and you don't want it to play higher than 100, it doesn't just stop it right at 100, it starts to slowly trickle away. So it'll start playing, you know, maybe 105, 110, 120, but as it gets further away from 100, it becomes quieter and quieter. So it still plays a little bit above that set number, but it, dra it drastically stops playing. It's called a crossover slope. 12 dB, 24 dB, 60 dB, depending on your system, is the slope and how quickly it drops off. So let's say I have a negative 6 dB slope, so it means that it's probably gonna gradually fall off. If I have a 12 dB slope, it's gonna pretty quickly start to fall off. If I have a 24 dB slope, it's gonna pretty much stop right around that 100 hertz mark. So if you have the capabilities in your system, you can set a slope or your, your, for your crossover for how gradual you want your crossover to stop playing past your set, your set crossover, if that makes any sense to you guys. Now that we understand what crossovers do and how they operate in our system, now we can finally talk about how do we decide what crossover to set for our subwoofers. Now, there are two main ways that I decide how to, how to set my crossover. And the number one way is to look at my speakers and what their capabilities are. So let's go back to the bookshelf speaker here. Remember, this speaker said that it can play down to 60 hertz, but after that, it needs some assistance. And that's where the subwoofer comes in. So we at least need to set our subwoofer at least to 60 hertz, because at that point, we no longer have any bass coming from this speaker. So if we set our crossover to 60, we'll now have bass from the subwoofer to take over when this can't. So that's one of the easiest ways to figure out what what frequency to set your subwoofer to, your crossover, what to set your crossover to, is by looking at your speakers and seeing what they're capable of, and that gives you an idea of, okay, if my speakers can't play below 60 hertz, then I probably should set my subwoofer around 60, 70, 80 hertz, so that when we do play low bass, one, 
my subs can take over and two, I can protect my bookshelf speaker from any problems or any harm in the future. The second way that I decide how to set my subwoofer crossover is, of course, we look at the speakers and see what their capabilities are, but we also want to pick a crossover that achieves the best blend. And when I say blend, I mean the seamless transition between your speaker and your sub so that when it, it does switch, you don't hear that transition. It just sounds like a seamless frequency response. That's what we want in our home theater and in our music setup if you're using a subwoofer. So how do we achieve that? Again, we want to look at our speakers and see what their best capability is. And we know my bookshelf speaker plays 60. So we know by default, we at least have to set the crossover on the subwoofer to 60. But that may not be the best blend. Maybe 75 is better. Maybe 80 is better. Maybe 65 is better. We have to play with this and see what sounds the smoothest. Because we don't want a part of the sound where there's a hole because if you set your crossover too low in your sub, then there is going to be a spot in your sound where your speakers aren't playing any bass and your sub's not playing any bass. So you have to make sure your crossover is high enough so that they handshake well. Again, the point of a crossover is to take some information and hand it to the next speaker in line when the frequencies become too much. So we want to set a crossover that's going to give us the best blend. And the way that we achieve that is to sit down in your main listening position and play with the crossover and say, okay, 60 hertz sounded good, but I think I'm gonna try 70. 70 was really good, let's go ahead and try 80. Okay, not 80, because now it's too boomy, I can really hear a lot more bass than I want. Let's lower my crossover down, back down to 70, I think that'll work. And how you decide and how you listen to what's best is to play a frequency sweep. You can do this in one of two ways. You can Bluetooth an app from your phone, a frequency generator, and have it sweep from, I don't know, maybe 50 hertz up to 100 hertz, and just listen to it sweep and play the crossover. You can even go to YouTube and type in frequency sweep, and you can find some sweeps so that it will play frequencies back and forth, so you can sit down in your, in your position and listen for the best quality of sound. So that's how I decide what crossover I should set to my subs. I don't actually pick what you may think I do. Most of my subs are set to like 50 hertz or 60 hertz. My Kef speakers can play down under 30 pretty, pretty well, to be honest with you. And so I have my crossover set about 50 or so because these do really good with bass on their own. And if I set my crossover too high, I'm gonna be overwhelmed with bass that may not sound good. So if I cross over my subs a little bit lower, about 60 or 55, now I achieve a really nice blend of bass where my low notes are still heavy and present, but that mid-range bass is not too bloated or boomy and it sounds really, really nice. And the transition between my Kev speaker and my subs is seamless. So that's how I go about my crossovers. All right, guys, there is a lot more we can dive into. This is kind of like an overview of crossover on subs, but I know there's going to be a lot of questions out there or some things you guys want to talk about. So the best way to get your questions answered is to leave them down below in the comment section. Tell me what questions you have, if any, or if you've achieved this in your home theater, leave us some tips in the comment section for those who are wondering how to set this in their home right now. That'll be great for everybody to see and we will greatly appreciate it. If you want more in depth of this, let me know as well and I'll make a dedicated video a little bit more in depth if you need me to. Other than that, we'll leave it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button and let me know what do you have your subs cross over to? What subs are you using and what crossover did you pick for them and why? I'm just kind of curious to know how you guys operate your home theater. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button and subscribe if you are not already. We will see you in the next, oh, we better see you in the next video. And if you're not subscribed, here I am making these videos and you're just watching for free. k guy out. Peace. Say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high. Even if the sky is falling down.